I am now very pleased to introduce our keynote speaker for the 2015 Boston University Henry M. Goldman School of Dental Medicine Commencement Convocation, Boston University's Dean of Students, Dr. Kenneth Elmore. <laughs> dean Elmore has served Boston University as its Dean of Students since 2003. A native of Brooklyn, New York, Dean Elmore has, here we go. <laughs> has over 20 years of experience in higher education administration. Prior to becoming Dean of Students, Dean Elmore worked with orientation programs, student activities, and residence life. He also practiced law in the Boston area. Dean Elmore is a graduate of Brown University, which by the way is my brother's alma mater. Boston University and the New England School of Law. Dean Elmore is especially interested in issues surrounding community development and social justice and seeks to motivate students to explore such topics. He likes to challenge others' thinking while embracing the new. He also likes to refer to himself as an artist who went to school to study psychology, education, and the law. Dean Elmore is a superlative example of the socially engaged and broad-minded individual we strive to graduate from the Henry M. Goldman School of Dental Medicine. He truly serves as an example to our students, our faculty, and especially to our 2015 graduates. It is an honor and certainly a privilege to welcome Dean of Students Ken Elmore to the podium to deliver the 2015 Henry M. Goldman School of Dental Medicine keynote address, and I know he will be an inspiration and an example to all of us in attendance. Please welcome Dr. Kenneth Elmore. Thank you, and good afternoon. So I first start by extending gratitude to a number of people. Gratitude to the faculty and Dean Hutter for being so foolhardy as to invite me to speak here today. What's more, I extend gratitude to family and friends, loved ones who have seen a number of you in your journeys. And I also extend gratitude to the class of 2015 for letting me have a real privilege to celebrate with you and hopefully to honor you as well. Now, you heard that I'm a lawyer and lawyers like to make fun of dentists. And I was told that dentists have plenty of payback with lawyers as well. And what I found was that as a person who's often not at a loss for words, I wasn't quite sure what to share with you today. I read somewhere in the New York Times that um, one thing a commencement speech or remark should do is to think about the meaning of life. And so I said, well, let's think about the meaning of life. And for me, when I think about the meaning of life, the first thing that comes to mind for me is John Coltrane's A Love Supreme. John Coltrane's A Love Supreme was put together in 1964, released in 1965, and I hope you all know who John Coltrane is. If you don't, please look him up. A Love Supreme was supposed to be for John Coltrane, something where he truly wanted to stretch music, where he wanted to flex music, where he wanted to move music in a different direction. It was also called a act of faith for him because he saw that what he was doing was playing poetry. Now, A Love Supreme also has this really interesting piece. It's about 33 minutes long, and it has sections in it that I think are just apropos for a day like today. He starts off with the acknowledgement. It moves into something, a movement called the resolution, and then into a, a final couple of resolutions, one called the pursuance, and then ultimately a psalm. And so what I'd love to do is to follow along with Coltrane, and if I had thought about it a little bit more, I would have had it playing in the background. Feel free, if you'd like, to put at least one headphone in and listen to it as I talk to you here. So, one of the things I acknowledge, and my dentist, I am one of my best friends as a dentist, and one of the things that he does beautifully is he tells stories. And I once said to him, I don't want to step into your office. What I want to do is to step into a story with you. I don't want to step into your office. I want to step into stories with you. And he is a great storyteller. 
He's a great talker. He's someone who is really conceptual, uses concept, conceptual storytelling quite a bit as a way to communicate with me, to give me a sense of how we will move forward. He is great in thinking about the conflicts I might encounter, as well as the characters, the setting, and a res resolution that ultimately will come with his work with me. I say, as part of what, acknowledging what you do, you tell stories. Stories are important, I think, to your work, per, certainly as a professional. Stories and storytelling are quite old, but what's more, my dentist with his stories has done well to motivate me to think about health matters, health matters that are important to me. And when I think about my dentist, uh, and I think about the professionals in my life, the ubiquitous professional in my life is actually my dentist. Almost any other professional I go to, I go to for a specialty. With him, I see him regularly. With him, I get to see him for a number of my health needs, and I had never thought about how important it was and how ubiquitous he was in my life. What's more, I acknowledge, and in the acknowledgement too, your teachers, your professors, the people have shown you how to tell those stories in classes, in labs, with internship, with work, they are folks who have been ubiquitous with you, and we acknowledge what they do as well. Now with the resolution here, as you are ubiquitous, one of the things that I think you should never do, and I, I don't think you will, but never underestimate the role of dental health. Dental health being an important piece, certainly for a person like me, as it comes down to disease, and nutrition being very, very important aspects of why I engage with my dentist on a regular basis. I also think that it is a wonderful piece that you are global in nature. Global just because I can look at you and see that, but what's more, I know that around the school, I see plenty of work that people are doing around the globe to really consider health and wellness and how important that is, and also to deal with the world and its income, the world and, the world and its disparities, both domestic and also in other places. Now the thing to achieve, the pursuance, if I can offer you that, the school has certainly give you a, given you a path to something to pursue and what you've achieved, the internships and the global impact. I even love things like the art day that this school does. Art Day being a very important piece to it all. Art being important to you. I am so glad that my dentist, who talks my ear off, has plenty to talk about. He knows his art, he knows his music, and I think it is an incredible thing that I can engage him in those sorts of pursuits. And I also see that you did these, this wonderful thing. You've lobbied, you've had days on Beacon Hill, and I think you've, you can pursue an important, important sort of thing and that is dealing with privacy in our lives, you will deal with that. That is dealing with benefits, dental benefits as part of healthcare, important things that I hope that you'll continue to lobby for. And what's more to think about your profession, you will do that over and over again. I end with a psalm, a gwawush, a way that you should think for yourselves. We need you to tell your stories and to continue to tell your stories of how you've come alive and how you stay alive in what you do. I urge you and I hope that you'll always have something to say and that you'll keep your perspectives and your stories eloquent, that you'll refine them so that they're hip and never be afraid to be bold as you tell your stories, especially when it comes to issues of justice and inequity. Keep the strength to love, listen to music and recite poetry if you can every day because it never gets old. Finally, I leave you with a real blessing that a great mentor of mine, George Bass, once said and always said to me, may joy, beauty, and kindness be with you day after day. May joy walk beside you, let kindness guide you, and may beauty always surround you. May you always want to say to friends, kinfolk, and strangers that you meet along life's way. Let the universe bless and keep you each and every day. Thank you for having me. Good luck and all the best to you. Dean Elmore, thank you very much for those wonderful words and profound message to our graduates. All you do in support of the university and the Henry M. Goldman School of Dental Medicine. And on a personal note, your and your wife Abby's friendship.